Hey guys, I've got some bad news. Well, actually, it's good news, but there's bad news. I am going into surgery soon, which means that I'll finally be able to breathe properly like a normal human being. The downside is I have to self-isolate before I go into surgery, which means I'm going to be very, very lonely. So I thought, you know, as I usually do when I'm lonely and need cheering up, I thought this would be a better time than ever to listen to some new music. And I thought, what better new music to listen to than the new Sam Fender album? Now, a little bit of background here. Sam Fender is a rising British star in the making. I actually quite like him. I've had mixed feelings about the stuff I've heard, but the stuff I really do like, I was like, wow, this really surprised me. They actually sound like songs. They've got good arrangements, like guitars and brass on, on the songs. Um, a lot of his influences include Bruce Springsteen and Jeff Buckley, two artists I very much enjoy. More importantly, the reason why he stands out to me is because he is Geordie. Yes, I know I don't sound Geordie, but half my family is from that area. Uh, I, it's just a shame I didn't pick up the accent or the bewitching good looks of the average Geordie man. Just kidding, I am very beautiful. I think I, think I really started to notice Sam Fender when he covered Linda's Farm. Now, if I'm being honest, I wasn't a big fan of his cover. I was just amazed that someone of my generation also likes Linda's fun. And that's when I went, damn, this guy's cool. I like this guy. I wanna, I wanna be his friend. Please, Sam, hey, be my friend. So I'm very looking forward to this new album. It's been quite hyped up to me, actually, a lot. I've seen it all over Instagram. So I'm looking forward to seeing if it's worth the hype. All right, the first track is the title track, 17 Going Under. Really, uh, can't wait to put that one out, eh? Oh, I, I get it, because you're 27. Nice tone on, on the voice, very northern. Fist fights on the beach. Sam, I must know which beaches you go to. Uh, personally, I'm a sleet and sluice kind of guy. I'm just going to be making a bunch of n northern jokes just to alienate my American fans who have no idea what Bambara is. I like those chimes. Reminds me of late 70s, early 80s new wave. A very um, 80s drum sound with that little... Is that a gated reverb? That sounds pretty cool. Saxophone? Yes! Oh, I like that. You know, it's always authentic Newcastle when you can't understand a word they're saying. Ooh! Van Halen synth right there. Yo, yo, I like that. That was like, um... Let me find it. Sam, I must know, is this, is this the inspiration? Because that would be really cool. Okay, well, I, I know I'm going to get distracted by that. you got to remember, this is like first initial thoughts. These aren't my final ratings of the songs, but I'm going to give that, I'm going to give that a solid seven. The production is really nice. Doesn't feel as overproduced as a lot of the other stuff I'm hearing on the radio. There, there was a lot of inspirations. Like, the drums reminded me, like, how they're mixed reminded me of, like, a Tom Petty record or the Travelling Wilburys, that kind of Jeff Lynn sound. I, I didn't find it super catchy. It was really well produced, but I, could, I didn't feel myself singing along to it. Uh, so that's why it stays a seven for me. The next song is Getting Started. Good, because I'm just getting started on reviewing music. I don't know where I'm going with this. Nice bass tone. Nice rhythm guitar. And that's a good vocal harmony too. 
Thing is, I'm usually not um, a fan of like the whole indie rock sound, that's really not my crowd. But here I kind of think that kind of soft, modern, like, uh, to put it crudely, snowflakey kind of sound, I think really suits what this song's about. It's about dreaming, you know, young people dreaming about getting away. See, I don't even know the words, but I'm singing along. To me, like, that's the sign of a great songwriter. When you're hearing it for the first time, you don't know the lyrics, and already, you're humming it. Ooh. Yo. Okay, I love the soundscape of that one. FYI, I've actually not listened to Sam's first album. Maybe I should. I don't know, maybe that would actually help me. That one was way catchier. I love the fact that there's a saxophone solo in it. That's really cool. I think my only problem is it's a little too short. Um, uh, maybe I need to listen to that one again. Uh, it'll probably grow on me a lot more. But as is, that gets a seven also. Alright, the next song is called I. I lad, why I lad, yes. You could not get more Geordie than naming a song, I. Claps. Very, um, you're the voice. Ooh. Ooh. This is calling shit out. Ooh, electronic drums. The, the production is consistent, even though these drums are electronic, they're still mixed the same, they still have the same level as the real drums, nothing feels drastically out of place. I'm also really proud because I thought this was going to be another majory song, but god damn is this song eerie. God, those, those harmonies are creepy. It's like evil Beach Boys, yes. Those new memes are great. God, this is kind of reminding me of Billy Idol a little bit. That kind of static, dystopian rock. Yo, that song blew me away, that. I loved the production of it. The, um, the, the synthy drums really does suit this kind of dystopian, nightmarish kind of nihilism the track was going for. The impression I got from when he was listing all like the tragedies and stuff, um, you know, the shooting of Lennon, uh, you know, the children in Epstein's playing, you know, all that stuff. When you pair that with the title, I, like, cause, cause for anybody that doesn't know, I is just like a casual expression up north, you know, I, you know, it's not really like a huge, Thing. It's just like, yeah, oh, I, you know, um, it's almost like, I mean, I might be completely misinterpreting the song here, but the impression I got was like, just being so numbed by the atrocities of the world. That's so much, because I, because I find that I go on the internet, there's so much bad shit happening that something else bad happens and I'm just kind of like, oh, okay. It's just like, wow. Okay, that's happening. But no, that song gets a nine. That song really, really impressed me. Definitely my favorite song so far, and I'm glad it was one of the singles. All right, the next song is Get You Down. Yeah, typical indie rock guitar. Very, uh... La Volta us apart again. You know the constant kick, which is cool, adds a lot of uh, kind of subbiness to it. I like that synth in the background. There. Kind of reminds me of like a really fast U2 song. Back at it again with that saxophone. Sam Fender, more like sax Fender. That was terrible. Ooh, love it. Very, uh, this is a very 80s track. Uh, I don't know. This track's not doing it for me as the other ones. I don't know what it is, because it's it's got the makings of a single, but I don't know. 
I thought, I think it's beautifully produced, like it sounds great, but I don't know, it, it, maybe, maybe I just need to give it time, but it, I don't know, it didn't hit me like the other ones did. Uh, but it sounds it sounds great, and I will say so far it has the best saxophone I've heard. So I think I'm going to give that one a six. Next track is "Long Way Off." Well, it's not a long way off. We're halfway. Ooh, okay. I love those harsh drums paired with that pretty little synth. I could de definitely hear more of the Springsteen side of him here. It's way kind of rougher, more, uh, you know, got grip to it. I can't tell if those are real drums that have been manipulated or if these are samples, but the drums sound gorgeous here. Ooh, that brass band. Kind of give, you know what this song kind of reminds me of? Uh, the 21 Pilots song Morph, but less subdued, like a more epic version. Because it's the same key, similar progression, you have the brass, and it just makes it sound so much cooler. Alright, that was a real grower. I loved the drums on it, I liked the the more gritty tone it had compared to some of the lighter songs. I loved the brass band. Even though I wasn't really finding myself singing along to it, I liked um, I liked a lot of the word choices. So I'm gonna give that one an eight. That was a really strong song and I could see that being a single in the future. Mind you, I remember hearing Billie Eilish's album when it first came out saying, oh, bad guy, that's a hit right there. And then like a week later, it was all over the radio. So, um, Sam, if you watch this, I really hope I'm right on that. Long, long way off. Next single. Come on, please, baby, please do it. Do it for me. All right. Next song is another single. In fact, this is the last of the four singles. This is Spit of You. 80s drums. In fact, the whole production of this album screams 80s. Okay, so it's almost like it's almost like a shortening of spitting image on the spit of you. Okay, I'm interested to see what he does with this concept. I love how it sounds like it's getting gradually louder. That's pretty cool. Anyone. I can talk to anyone. Okay, I'm singing along. Okay, cool guitar solo. I like the way the acoustic guitars are treated on this song. The acoustics sound much better on this song. Oh man, I can't get enough of the sax. It just makes me think of David Bowie, who's like my favorite artist. You're giving me flashbacks, dude. <laughs> my flatmate singing my songs because he knows they're good. So yeah, uh, that song I thought was really nice. It wasn't um, as fast as I'd like to be. It was definitely a slower song. But I, once again, the production was great. I really like the acoustic guitars on that. I feel like that was definitely the best acoustic song. Uh, so yeah, I'd give that a seven. That was a very solid track once again. Next song is Last To Make It Home. Oh, it's gonna be one of these songs. Plodding slow. I have nothing to complain about. I'm just being a dick. I actually recognize that synth sound. It, it, is that like a logic preset? I feel like I've used that before. Well, it sounds nice, that's for sure. Oh, that guitar sound in the background's really cool. Very cryptic. And the battery is dying. <laughs> well, initially I was going to give that a 5 because I wasn't really getting into that at all and I was kind of drifting in and out. I was a bit of a slug. However, that really cool guitar sound 
that really does help lift the song, um, pushes it up to a six, because that, that, that was an awesome ending to that song. It, it like, because the song is, it's kind of, you know, it's sad, it's moody, and then you put that in, it's like, oh, this is cryptic. This is, this is depressing. It's like, it's like someone looking back on their life and realizing, wow, things sucked back then too. Uh, the battery went, uh, and I had to change it, and I think I'm getting a cold, so I don't sound as chipper as I usually, and if there's a bit of, you know, a little sniffle, you know, Little little waterfalls. I apologize profusely. Profusely? Musely? I don't know. Next song is The Leveler. An interesting name. Is it a guy who designs video games? I hope so. Ooh. You got them fast drums going. Coming out of my cage and I'll be feeling just fine. And I gotta be so because I want it all. Ooh! Good chords. Very cool chords. Has a very exotic sound to it with that chord progression. You sound like the emperor of your own kingdom. Tambourine. Ooh, cool, uh, cool guitar solo. The guitar solo kind of reminds me of Mick Ronson with the kind of crazy notes, but I wish it was up more up in the mix. I can't hear it very well. That was a real mixed bag because there were things that I didn't really like. I found the drum pattern to be a bit generic. Um, what The chorus didn't really grab me like it should have done. However, there were also things I really liked. I liked the strings. I liked the chord choices. Uh, it gave it a real kind of Eastern sound, and I loved the vocal performance. I think I'm gonna give it a six. I think all, all I know is that personally I feel like that was the worst so far in terms of mixing. I feel like it was mixed the worst. <laughs> right, the next song is Mantra the rejected song for the Aquaman soundtrack. True story, true story. Okay, we've got a slow kind of romantic ballad feeling. This sounds like a Genesis song. It's not like something from We Can Dance. Hold on my heart. I don't know how that song goes. <laughs> Yes, true. Okay, I get what this is, this, is, this is like. Stuff that you tell yourself repeatedly because you keep on making the same mistake kind of thing. But like the previous song, these chord choices are really nice. I must say, so far this is a very well written album. Everything feels thought out. Ooh, trumpet! Nice. I feel like I'm at a market at the sea. Oh, we go up to the quayside. There's a guy playing the trumpet. This one's kind of dragging. Uh, I feel like this instrumental section doesn't need to be that long. Actually, you know what? Cons considering how it ends, I'm actually going to take back my comment about it dragging on for too long. The idea of mantra, you know, this repeated phrase, you know, he kind of tells you at the start, you know, that the, he gives you advice and then you kind of let this instrumental go on. Kind of like, kind of like life goes on, you know, you got this trumpet solo go on and the guitar goes on and it kind of just gradually reaches this nice end. You know, that actually might be one of my favourite tracks. I'm going to give that a seven as well. That was really good. Next song is Paradigm. Paradigms, nice. Nice name, let's see. Good drum rhythm, nice. Oh, love the blending of instruments here. Kind of sounds like a, like an early Coldplay song or something. Is that a harmonica in the background? That's really nicely sat there in the, uh, underneath the mix. 
Okay, it's a nice little backing effect. Love that uh, violin in the background. It gives it an almost kind of folkish feel to it. Uh, honestly, I don't really have anything to say about that song. Um, the, it sounded nice. It was good. A nice deep cut. I'll give that a seven. It was solid. The final song, Dying Light, there are four, no, five bonus tracks, but uh, I'm not going to include them. I'm going to sneeze. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. It's the final song. It's got to be emotional. Piano suits it. I hate having sinuses. I'm, my surgery involves fixing my nose, so... Penniless heroes. Working class hero, man. Working class hero. It's like a pretty little Geordie ballet. Oh, backing vocals. Oh, build up. I'm feeling this song. Oh, dude, this explosion is brilliant. Nice. Oh, that slow down, man. Damn, and I love the combination of like real strings and those keypad strings. I think that song is gonna get a nine from me. That was one of the best on the album. Sounded incredible, perfect closer, great explosion at the end. It just, it ca it, I feel like it really nicely captured all the emotions of this album in a great closer. Honestly, I was thoroughly surprised and happily impressed by this guy. I'd like to say I think he's going to go places, but I know he's going places. He is going places. This album, I believe, hit number one in the UK. And good for him. I would love to see this guy progress because I think there's a lot of cool stuff this guy could do. I think he could expand on his influences. Uh, a lot, uh, make them interesting. Um, I will say I do prefer a lot of the kind of more deeper, darker, angstier kind of cuts over the kind of pop singles on the album. Um, I, I feel like uh, he could make a really good kind of dark, angry al uh, album next. I also think like the whole kind of 80s influence and 80s production, I think you could really take that in an interesting way. You could, you can either go further into that, like channel specific sounds that you haven't before, or you could either take it in a different approach where like, okay, we, I've done an album that's like inspired by my favorite 80s artists. Now I'm gonna move on to the 90s. Imagine that, Sam Fender going grunge. <laughs> uh, no, uh, in all seriousness though, that would be interesting. Sam, do you perchance like the Smashing Pumpkins, because I I do, yes. Nah, um, I've, overall I'd say this is a really solid album. The great songs are great, the okay songs, no. Uh, overall I'd say this was a really solid album. It, you know, the good songs were great, the weaker songs still sounded nice to the ear. There was no unpleasant moment uh, for me. And I feel like I'll probably be returning to some of those songs again. So yeah, thank you Sam Fender, and thank you Newcastle for being the greatest city in the UK at least. My flatmate trying to, trying to, um... Sabotage your video? Oh shit. Yes. Yes. Just because it's your camera. <laughs> yes. That means I have the right legally to sabotage the Oh, shut up. Just because you're prettier than me. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I will. I will shit under your pillow. Shut the fuck up. No, you shut the fuck up. You invaded my video, you little poo poo wee wee. <laughs> what the fuck? God damn it.